Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achono and welcome back to my C++ series. So today we're gonna to be talking about strings and specifically something called small string optimization or SSO for short. What does it mean? Why do we care? And how does it improve our string experience? Now strings are a very interesting topic, I think in C++ or in just in any language in general, because they have all of this kind of negative stigma, I guess, associated with them. They have this reputation of being slow and don't even start talking about performance to a C++ programmer because, man, if something's slow in C++, it's really easy to look at someone's code, see them using strings in a way that you just frown upon and then immediately think that they're either not a good programmer or they're doing things the stupid slow way. There's just so much negativity associated with strings, believe me. But I'm here to tell you that it's not all bad. And in fact, sometimes when you do see someone using a string, maybe it's not as bad as you think. Now, strings in general, I think are something that we're just gonna continue talking about every now and then on this channel. It's impossible to program without strings, but on the other hand, reducing your usage of strings in your code can significantly speed it up depending on how in fact you do use them. So expect this topic to stay around. But today specifically, we're going to be looking at how small strings are actually optimized by the C++ standard library so that they end up being not as bad as you think. But first I wanna thank Hostinger for sponsoring this video. If you guys have not heard of Hostinger, Hostinger is a fast and secure web hosting platform. Now I think that nowadays in 2020, pretty much everyone should have a website. If you don't have a website and you're trying to become a programmer, well, you need some kind of website so that you can easily show people what it is you're working on and what you've achieved, especially if you're looking for a job. Don't even get me started on that. And what people don't realize is that the added benefit to all this is that you will know how to set up a website. The fact that you've got a website on the internet to me immediately means that, well, you know how to set up a website, you know how web hosting works, and that's a perk in and of itself. Now, there's a lot to love about hosting it specifically, apart from being really, really fast, really intuitive, the fact that they have built-in diagnostics to help you along the way if something like your DNS isn't set up correctly. Apart from all of that, they're also really, really affordable, and I absolutely love that because web hosting should be accessible to as many people as possible, even if you don't have a lot of money to spend on this and hosting it, I really think they hit the ball on that because they are super amazing and affordable. A lot of these kind of cheaper web hosts just don't seem to do that great of a job, but hosting it is not some cheap web host. Hosting it is, it's just a really good web hosting platform regardless of the price. So if you don't have a website yet and you wanna get online or you're with some other web host and you're not enjoying that experience and you wanna come over to a good one, then definitely check out Hostinger. There'll be a link in the description. You can save up to 91% off their hosting plans if you use this code, code CHERNO. So definitely check out Hostinger if you guys need any kind of web hosting. Link in the description below. All right. Strings. Oh, strings, 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 strings. Where would we be without strings? Probably not where we are today, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, don't know. One of the reasons that we don't like strings is because they tend to allocate memory and C++, heap allocations, bad. Those things are just grouped together so much, even though I mean, arguably speaking, memory allocation maybe isn't that bad. Anyway, I better not say anything because so because we know that creating a standard string results in a memory allocation, a lot of people try and kind of avoid that. They'll try and reduce their kind of string usage or they'll try and come up with creative ideas of how to use strings or in worst case scenario, they'll just berate you for using strings because why are you allocating so much memory all the time? Don't you know that that is bad? But as I mentioned, I'm here to tell you that no, it's not necessarily bad because the C++ standard library has maybe somewhat surprisingly thought of this and they've put a stop to it by saying that small strings, that is strings that are not exceedingly long, they don't need to be heap allocated. I can just allocate a little stack based buffer that is not heap allocated. And that is gonna be my static string storage for strings that are below a certain length. Now, what that actual length is to define a small string can absolutely vary based on the C++ standard library that you're using. But here in Visual Studio 2019, that length seems to be 15 characters. If you have a string that is 15 characters or less, it will not allocate memory on the heap. It will just use that stack buffer, as I mentioned. However, if you do have a string that is 16 characters or above, 
that's gonna hit malloc and you know heap alloc and whatever on earth function is used to allocate memory on whatever platform you're on. So in other words, if you have a string that's quite small, you don't have to worry about using a const char pointer or trying to micromanage or optimize that kind of bit of your code because likely that's not gonna result in a heap allocation anyway. So without further ado, let's dive into Visual Studio and actually take a look at how this works behind the scenes and see it in action. I'm just gonna make a string. I'm gonna call it Cherno. Now this is a really small string. It's only six characters, which would throw a lot of people off because if you assign this to a standard string, there's this kind of implication of a heap allocation. A lot of people might choose to actually do something like this, like a const char name, because this is something that is clearly a static string, meaning we're not gonna be appending anything to it. We're not taking it in from a file or from like the console or anything like that. It's just a simple static string. So why then would I use a standard string if that comes with that whole heap allocation overhead? Well, here's the thing. It doesn't come with a heap allocation overhead because this fits the criteria of a small string in C++, which means it will in fact just be stored in a statically allocated buffer that does not touch the heap at all. So let's take a look at this in action. What I'm actually gonna do is something a little bit different. Instead of just straight away jumping to a practical example and then maybe taking a look at, you know, overriding operator new, which I think we will do eventually in this video as well. I'm just gonna to go to the definition of string. Now let's take a look at this. I'll hide this solution explorer. So we have string as a basic string. Um, now there's a few things that we need to note here, mainly the fact that the element type here is a char. So if we go to this class here and we take a look at it, we have this element type here, which we know as char. If we go down to the constructor that actually takes in some kind of buffer of characters, which looks like what this thing is here. So we have this kind of const lm pointer and lm of course is a const char pointer in this case. Now some of this stuff applies to only debug mode and other stuff applies to release mode. We'll take a look at that a bit later. But the main function here is assign, which takes in the actual pointer being that const char pointer, which is in fact the word cherno here. And then also account, which in this case would be six because cherno is six characters. If we go into this assign function, it might be a little bit difficult to find the right one, but in this case, it would be the one that takes in that element. That of course redirects to something else and does some, some extra conversion stuff. But if we drill down even more and we find the right one here, which is actually just a little bit above here, you can see this is the one that takes in that pointer and then the count of how many characters it is. There's this little if statement here. And this basically says that if the count, meaning the size of the string, is below a certain value, which is this kind of reserved size, which we'll check out in a minute, then actually what happens is we simply get what looks like to be an already existing buffer of memory and simply move our characters over into that buffer of memory and that's it and then we just return it. So there's no allocation at all. Whereas here, in this case, if it doesn't pass this if statement test, we actually call this reallocate for function, which as you can see eventually over here actually calls an allocate function and that allocate function will in fact hit the new operator and will cause a heap allocation. So let's go back a little bit here. What is this my res variable? It's the current storage reserved for string. So in other words, it's just that reserve size. So anything below this or equal to this will constitute a small string. And if we take a look at where this is actually set inside here, you can see that it gets set to buffer size minus one and buffer size for us is this scary val buff size, which is in fact a constant expression. And in this case, it's actually going to be 16. And we eventually subtract one, so we have 15. Meaning 15 is that maximum amount of characters that constitutes a small string. So that's kind of all the code and just a little bit kind of looking at how everything works here. And if I go back to that assign function, whichever one it is, then you can see that the presence of this if statement does in fact result in no heap allocations for a string that is 15 characters or smaller. And we can of course test this out. So what I like doing is writing this little operator new here. We'll just take in the size here. This will just simply return a malloc with the right size here. The benefit here is that we can actually put a breakpoint and I'll also add some custom code here to actually print this. So we'll just say allocating and then size and then bytes here. 
Okay, so let's not worry about this. Let's put a uh, cn.get so that we don't close our console and then let's launch this. All right, so check this out. We actually allocate eight bytes, even though our string clearly is below 15 characters. That's another little quirk with Visual Studio string class. It's basically something that only happens in debug mode, but if we switch to release mode and we launch this, then you'll see we have no allocations at all. But if I expand this and make this a little bit more than these six characters, so seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that's exactly 15 characters. Let's take a look at that. Still nothing, no allocations. But the moment I go into 16 characters, you can see we allocate 32 bytes. So it immediately snaps up to this predefined value here. With just one character less, we have absolutely no heap allocations. But once we tip over to 16 characters or more, we allocate memory on the heap. And that's basically all there is to say for this video. If, if you don't care about any more details, you can pretty much stop watching now. Just know that in C++ and specifically in this implementation of the C++ standard library, which I'm using Visual Studio 2019 here, any string that is 15 characters or less does not cause a heap allocation. And in that sense, it's an optimization. It's more efficient, it's faster. Now let's quickly take a look at what on earth happens in debug mode that causes an allocation. We'll put a breakpoint here and I'll also take this back to Cherno and we'll check it out. All right, so this allocation comes from external code. Let's just show that external code and let's go up to here, which is probably gonna show us what we want to see. I'll just make some more room here. There it is, container proxy pointer. So this is what causes the allocation. Now this container proxy pointer you can see is equal to this rebind alloc t situation, which is actually a template argument for this uh, class. So I don't even know what this is, to be honest, it's so complicated. But basically the point of this whole thing is that you can see that this is only the case if the iterated debug level is not zero, because in that sense, this part of the code gets compiled. However, if the debug level is zero, which is what it would be in release mode, you can see that instead this get proxy allocator is a fake allocator and this fake allocator does absolutely nothing. So this container proxy 12, which eventually actually causes that new allocation to take place. So it turns out that it's a little bit of a red herring in the sense that it's a debug only allocation and it's not in fact small string optimization not working. It's just the case for all debug strings. Okay, so that's small string optimization. Strings that are sufficiently small will not cause any heap allocations and thus will result in your program running faster. It's a cute little trick that they worked into the C++ standard library to make it that little bit faster. How thoughtful. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Drop a comment below with what you would like to see next. I'm about to come out with a whole bunch of like data structures and patterns and all of that kind of stuff videos. That's what I'm kind of more or less gravitating towards with the C++ series. Don't forget to check out Hostinger for up to 91% off web hosting and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.